everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're discussing a very important topic with my friend Ananya, who is also the SRC member for racial equality here at St Andrews. Today's discussion is going to be based on racial equality in St Andrews with relation to what's been going on in the world, the Black Lives Matter movement and things that we can do to help and be allies, how to educate ourselves as well as discussing things that have been going on between the students and the university. Hi everyone, I'm Ananya. I'm currently going into my third year at the university and I'll be studying art history and English. This March, I was elected as the member for racial equality and cultural diversity. And as part of my role, I sit on the student representative council. I work towards amplifying the voices of the student body, specifically with reference to issues of racism, racial inequality, differentiation, and generally making St. Andrews a more inclusive and accepting place. How about we start about discussing um, Sally Mapstone, the elephant in the room? Yeah, so I think obviously we understand that diversity is an issue in St. Andrews and there has been conversation about it and we have acknowledged it, but I think the biggest problem was the email that was sent out and I think that is what caused a lot of dissatisfaction for me and I think for everyone who read it. Oh, massively. I remember reading it because, you know, she's an English literature major. That's what her degrees are in and I was like, how is a woman who has a PhD in English literature not know how to phrase an email properly. The fact that she made a statement about not making a statement, it, she just, everything she said just happened to make things worse. It was a big issue because this was not a COVID update as the subject said. I think it was really trivialized in her email. With something like this, you do expect the institution or the university and we should expect them to like make a statement. I think making a public sp statement says a lot and I think that was like a big issue and that was what was lacking and that like you rightly said it made it much worse. Also considering that a bunch of people specifically like BAME individuals and like students who also have certain like a certain role to play in the university and are representatives of some sort we've been talking about this a lot. There's a lot of conversation about the fact that she is open to conversation on diversity and she understands this that this is an issue but I just feel like the email itself was so misplaced it really made things worse so a lot of people may not know this but because this was something that was happening pretty much within the university and I don't think it was broadcast a lot elsewhere but after she sent her email about not making a statement the students came up with a letter to send to her which a lot of us signed the letter was actually written by a student who is at the university we have this uh, group called the BAME Network and it's an informal group where there was a lot of conversation about what should be done and about how we can take immediate action to address this. So there was a student who decided to write a draft of this open letter and within 24 hours we got over 2,000 signatures from student and also one professor or lecturer. It's undisclosed wow. who but the response from like the student body was quite like positive and it was very fast because we had to get the email out soon. After we sent this email Email. Her response was also interesting. I, uh, if that's a word that we can use to describe her response, because she took a very defensive stance, which I don't think was necessary. I appreciate that she apologized that the university hasn't done enough in the past, but then she went on to defend the university. Yeah, I think that was a big problem. A major part of the issue is transparency. So actually telling students what's going on and it's something you can see through those letters and see through her response because uh, there are talks and she has agreed to have like a round table discussion with a group of BAME students and like talk about our issues and address it and that is scheduled for sometime next week but I don't think the public statement that was sent out there was still like not even close to satisfactory I still think it was very it was quite forced yeah I agree so do you want to talk about Jerry DeGroote's blog I for one love the man I think he He's amazing. It was very interesting to see him mention things that I probably hadn't even thought about myself. Like what Anthony Simpson Pike had said on Twitter. I was really surprised. Kind of looking more into the university's very obvious racist past and how in the past people like Louise Richardson did nothing over the lack of representation. Yeah, no, definitely. I also think the whole like bongo ball, whether or not it was associated with the university directly. 
it was still advertised by them it was still a thing that existed in st andrews till very recently and that was particularly shocking to me i also wanted to mention that in the open letter that was sent to sally mapstone there was mention for things that we want to implement could you just tell us a little bit more about that there has been a lot of conversation about this even after the letter was written but i think there was a lot of emphasis on specifically outreach so recruiting more beam students more beam staff because those numbers and statistics are completely appalling like till very recently i didn't know anything about them so out of like i think 206 staff employed at the university only six are beam and come from other backgrounds which is that number itself is really shocking that's insane yeah that is one thing we really want to address you know we need to make this a safer space for firstly for beam students to come into and also secondly for them to apply for them to know about because i think that is the target audience right now for st andrews and like the students they're trying to recruit are of a certain background which needs to be changed yeah, I think on a personal note, I noticed that there was a problem from the very first semester that I started here and I'm pretty sure a lot of people felt the same doing subjects like the subjects that we do ending up in a room full of white people. Yeah, I think every non-white person at St. Andrews has experienced this in those situations. Specifically, if I think about like situations like tutorial, like on a personal note, there were times when racism or the way th people were talking, it was microaggression right people were saying things without realizing that what they're saying is highly problematic it was such a central part of my identity or it was so starkly visible to me that it was shocking that they couldn't see it exactly i completely agree i also think the curriculum is something that needs to be looked into whether it's history the humanities any kind of subjects and i particularly would like to speak about the humanities because that's what i'm doing this idea that either other cultures are not taught at all or they're always taught in reference to the west somehow that is another big problem. That comes in turn with the fact that we have so few BAME staff at St Andrews because essentially the tutors and lecturers, they will influence the courses that are taught here. Mm -hmm. At least that's why I felt that looking at English courses, I always got a bit more diversity than I thought I would get in, in history. And even then, there's so many problematic things. How some of these modules are treated. I've changed my degree now, but I came into uni doing a Middle Eastern degree. And for the first one and a half years of my university experience, I didn't even study the Middle East. I didn't even look at the Middle East. No, definitely I agree because, well, I was initially going to do modern history because I wanted to specialize in something related to South Asian history. While there, there are a lot of modules that offer an insight into South Asian history, I do feel that a lot of them are probably like directly just related to Britain so it's only things about colonization it is quite restrictive I would obviously though like to say that there are certain members of staff that are actively trying to change this in my first year in my second semester I had a tutor and she would tell us every time she would tell someone to talk about a decolonized source basically critically examine our reading list and we realized that most of the sources were written by white men it was mandatory reading we had to read it having people like those I wouldn't say that there is no one like that in St. Andrews, a lot of the staff is actively trying to make this change. We need more of those people. And like you said, I think we need more people of color, more BAME individuals, more individuals who specialize in these things because they belong to these cultures. Leading into the fact that students do experience significant amounts of racism. So I want to bring the conversation to talking about the things that have been happening in St. Andrews over the past one or two weeks. Let's talk about the posters, the Black Lives Matter posters posters being ripped down by a middle-aged white racist woman. It's really appalling because a lot of incidents of racism, students are racist, there are a lot of really racist students also, but it's also like the community in general, you know, whether it's other incidents that I think the some of the local kids were involved in, you know, things like this. It's really appalling because we may say we live in a progressive world where, you know, things are changing, we are changing. All of these are really like, they are realities. I feel like I have no words for something like this because this is not even not wanting to understand someone's perspective this is actively taking a violent action and creating something out of it the level of shock i felt when i read that statement about a girl whose friend was attacked in public in broad daylight not that it makes it worse but it just adds to the impossibility of it 
it really hurts the fact that it happened in this town. It really hurts because we as students, we don't want to think that the university could do wrong, but it's so clear. I think everyone has to come together and work as a whole in order to fix this problem, this huge problem. Yeah, I definitely agree because I think there is a process. The first thing is actually recognizing that there is a problem. And I feel like there are still, despite all of this, despite the fact that right now is the time when dialogue about this is probably Probably the most it's been in years there are still people who are denying the fact that there is a problem so I think that is something definitely to consider and also secondly I think we need to hold our institutions accountable I do believe that but like you said I think there's a need for collective action critiquing but then following that up with action as well and actually doing something about it it's so important for the university to be doing something but I also think that because we are a university town we can't really find function without the town, the town can't really function without us. The things that we're doing or the things that we will do to introduce more BAME students and BAME staff and to have more people of colour in this university, I think that also needs to come with a means to educate and speak to the community here as well. It won't work otherwise. We are talking about reaching out to BAME staff, BAME students and making them part of St Andrews but what if St Andrews is like considering how things are going right now St Andrews doesn't seem like a safe space for people of color for BAME individuals why would anyone want to come here so I think you know that is something that needs to be worked on a lot and you know this actually brings me back to a couple months ago when students were being attacked by school children some of those cases were definitely racist cases if you read the saint article i'll have it linked below you can see some people being called out and attacked for how they look i think that that needs to be emphasized not only that it's wrong but that the schools the police need to be doing active things to fix this yeah i know definitely and i I particularly remember it was even more shocking to me because it was repeatedly happening on the street where I lived. Initially, specifically when I came, while I understood the problems, I always saw St. Andrews as a safe community. You know, regardless of the issues I had, regardless of the critique I had for the institution as well, I always saw it as a town or as a small place where I felt safe. But I think incidents like this, that's why I think they were even more shocking for me. There is definitely a need to work alongside the community, whether that's with community relations or extend this dialogue beyond just students into the town. I also do think that if the university approaches community relations or approaches like people of the town I think they will be open to talking because also at the end of the day it is a nice place there are a lot of people who are receptive of different views and I think we need to use that and we need to create a better relationship between the people of the town and the university and I think that is a good way to address an issue like this. Yeah, and you know, town and gown has been at each other's necks for decades. It is important to acknowledge that this is not a new issue in St. Andrews. Like, yes, there's a lot of dialogue about it right now, which is great, but this is historically, we have been a racist place. And I think that is something that we can't shy away from. Even with the small level of diversity that is there, I don't think much attempt has been made to be more inclusive Inclusive with the students who are already at the university. Obviously there are different cultural societies and they do different events but I do feel that sometimes everyone operates in some sort of a vacuum. I think there is a need to like assimilate that together. I think last year with a multicultural week we tried to do that. It was a step towards that but I do think that celebrating diversity is great but I think sometimes what happens is that is only something which is like surface level. The larger conversations and the more uncomfortable conversations I think sometimes people avoid having and that's what causes problems and that's why this idea of inclusivity this idea of wanting to actually understand another person and another culture does not exist in a lot of people in St Andrews including students you know what's actually blows my mind as well the fact that I as a non-white person didn't even know about multicultural week when it was going on this year I'm kind of responsible for managing the entire week but it was a new thing last year it used to exist like many years ago as something called Pangea but that never really worked out and it didn't gain as much traction so last year we decided to reintroduce it and I was actually part of a committee for that but it was still fairly new it was small we we're still trying to work on it and on like expanding the audience for it so obviously the situation is quite strange right now and we don't know when we'll get back but that is something I personally 
really am quite passionate about and want to work on. I need to mention this as well because I am someone who grew up in a British school. Yes, it was international, but it was still a British school. And the curriculum in British schools, frankly, is not diverse enough. And I think that we need to understand that the British students who come to this university, there is perhaps a gap that needs to be bridged in people's knowledge. People who have probably never even studied the histories of other countries aside from European countries. I definitely think the university can make strides in that regard. What we discussed as well before about Sex Education Week. Got Consent does some stuff with it or Sex Expression, one of them. They are about raising awareness about consent and about sexual education. And it's compulsory for all fresher students to go through this workshop and have discussions about it face to face with other students. There is an opportunity for us to introduce the same type of conversation but with regards to racism and racial equality. Yeah I definitely agree because I remember we had the God Consent workshops in halls and I know a lot of societies also make that training mandatory. The fact that it's led by students says a lot and that's what makes it effective. It's very relatable. It is about like personal experiences. This is definitely something that needs to be worked on and a lot of people have voiced this and I think even whether it's having it as part of to start with like online or orientation we need some kind of concrete plan and like concrete racial equality training and I think that that is something that the university can definitely do and would be a good place to start. There's a lot going on specifically with reference to social media. So there's a lot of activism and a lot of people are talking about different things. One of the aspects is about being a good ally. And I think that's something students definitely need to work on and look at because while there has been conversation about this, I still think there is a lot of performative allyship, you know, where people are posting things but not partaking in tangible action. That that definitely, yeah, it creates a gap. If at this point, if you've gotten this far in the video and you still haven't done much to educate yourself on the matter, there will be links below. Please read them. You may not think that signing a petition will do anything, but it is important that you do so. It's been a couple weeks that this has been going on in the world. If you don't know what's going on, please do read up on it. It takes a little bit of time. You get so much insight into various different issues that are going on within the BLM movement, within BAME issues, and it needs to be addressed. I also had another thing which I think is something to look at. I've been looking at it in my own culture and where I am at home. I don't know how much you agree or disagree with this, but I feel like a lot of the times I don't know, people of color or even other individuals belonging to BAME communities partake in the same kind of racism that they themselves are subject to. Yeah, I completely agree with this. This is actually one of the conversations that I've been having with family members. For example, in Iran, there is a lot of racism towards people from Afghanistan who have had to migrate to Iran. I definitely think that these are all different problems, but they are all rooted in racism. And racism is every Everywhere, but that doesn't mean that we don't have to do something to be able to encourage understanding and inclusivity and stop the racist mindset that has been going on for hundreds of years. Yeah, I think it's the same with like India, whether it's colorism. It starts off with colorism. There is so much discrimination against you if you're darker or, you know, and there's a lots of, lots of slur words associated with that. A lot of people in society have contributed to this rhetoric of anti-blackness also. So while there is discrimination within our societies and we have a problem when you know someone says something to us as like individuals or as South Asians I don't think we speak out the same way when that's happening to someone else and we partake in the same forms of racism. The sad fact of the matter is it does happen everywhere we really need to work hard on it in order to both make reparations for racist things that have been said or done in the past and also to move on to a community that has kindness and love and support and inclusivity in it. 
is there anything you want to say to either current students or freshers that are incoming or you know people who are applying because um, we've been encouraging in our past videos anyone of color if you have reservations about applying to St Andrews or accepting your offer please do message us and get in touch because I think it's so important to have more people of color at this university to encourage this diversity in applicants and people who are considering accepting their offers so to incoming freshers if you have any doubts or inquiries please send me a message and we'll chat about it yeah i know definitely the same thing i think while we are talking about a lot of the problems that people of color and BAME students deal with at St. Andrews, it is still a community where the BAME community itself is strong. It may be small, but there is a place for everyone. So yeah, definitely, if you have any apprehensions about it, I'm also open to talking. And the reason we're talking about issues like this, the reason we're bringing these to the forefront is because now is the time when people actually want these things to change. St. Andrews as a place, as a community, and even whether it's the university or the student body, we can bring about this change and right now there's a lot of drive to do that um to students who are here and you have your own concerns as well know that people who we've placed our trust in are student members who are part of societies who are part of our different cultural societies that they are doing what needs to be done to make change no one should feel unsafe in st andrews like no student should have to feel like they are at threat physically or emotionally or mentally there is a community there is a strong student community that you can reach out to whether that's representative while there are a lot of people who may partake in such racist activities there's a lot of people who are also willing to listen so if you are going through something or if you are if you feel personally targeted like please reach out to someone and I'm sure they'll be willing to listen and actually willing to take actions rather than just talking or just telling you it's okay or brushing things under the carpet I think now it's a time where everyone is willing to take action and wants to actively change things I hope this is the right time to say this, but with the pandemic, a lot of Asian students have been receiving a lot of discrimination, especially when it started. And we've heard a lot from students who have experienced it in the past couple of months. I need to say that that is completely unacceptable and that we need to be making a larger effort as a community to be allies to people who are facing discrimination and are being hurt by a community that is meant to love them and support them. Thank you all for watching. Today's video was quite a serious one, but we need to have this discussion. You will find links below to all the things we have talked about. Also, mine and Ananya's details if you want to get in contact with either of us. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely week. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here to have this conversation with me. Bye.